Hey guys, well this is the third time that we've done this, so um, yeah, it's been some good questions so far, so looking forward to answering some after Brazil and after Tassie, so it's been a busy couple of weeks, so I've got uh, a good price tonight too, so I'll, uh, I'll get into that a little bit later, but um, it's going to be revolved around hashtagging Frosty Fan when you go to Instagram and post a pic. And if you do the hashtag Frosty Fan, and uh, and then the photos will go onto the website, and then I'll check the website after this, and I'll show you the prizes when I finish at eight o'clock. All right, Nicholas, um, what did I think of the HRT's April Fool's post? Um, yeah, it was pretty. Uh, it looked pretty good actually. I saw the the truck driving across the water, but I got roped into doing one with Bathurst and. Um, yeah, it was a pretty average skin on the Yao one, but um, would be good to do Bathurst in reverse. So when they come round, I sort of wanted to believe it, but um, unfortunately, April Fools is when they do all their all their skits. Um, what did I think about a second Bathurst event? And do a, I hate Winch Cup? <laughs> um, <coughs> the I reckon the second Bathurst event would be good, but you couldn't go the other way because be too dangerous. So, um, but yeah, sprint race up there would be pretty cool. But um, yeah, and what do I think of Wing Cup? He, um, yeah, he's one of my probably biggest enemies on the track. But you uh, definitely respect him. He's he's quick. But if I can beat him, and he's probably the guy you want to beat the most. Um, yeah, but the the rivalry is on track. But you do respect him. Um, what was it like to win Bathurst, and what is it like to versus Jamie, and I'm your biggest fan? Thanks. Oh, you're Jamie too, but you spelled differently. Um, oh, Bathurst was awesome. It was good to good to win, and um, yeah, good to battle to the end, and good to, to know that we can beat you know the Triple Eight and win Cup on our day. And on that day, we uh, we definitely beat them fair and square. So it was uh, it was it was pretty good. Would love to know what the biggest challenge in your career is. Oh, there's been lots of challenges. Probably just getting to V8 Supercars was the uh, was the toughest one because it's um, it's pretty cutthroat and there's lots of guys with with money and stuff that try and come in. And coming from a family with no money, it was pretty pretty tough to get in. But there's always challenges now trying to get uh, you know get race wins and the pressures and everything. There's always challenges. So. It never stops, unfortunately. Uh, firstly, I'm disappointed this isn't a love chat. You know, I'm not very good with the typo. I'll put a love chat on Twitter, not live chat. So I can do a love chat, but that might be a little bit later tonight, potentially. Um, secondly, did you get penalised for being on Roland's racetrack? Did anyone get a picture of Wink Cup's face when you said that? Would have been hilarious. No, I didn't get a penalty, but I actually had a protest from Triple Eight after the race about our steering column, which um, Triple Eight or Roland had to put up $7,000 to protest. And uh, and he, he thought that our steering column bracket was illegal, um, but uh, yeah, it's not. It's exactly the same as this. We map ours a different way like 80% of the field do, and he lost $7,000. So um, that's the extreme that that team go to to try and beat you. and, and uh, so he's seven thousand dollars poorer. So it's a good day. Will you be driving the new Falcon in the V8s next year? Also, what are your thoughts on Cars Three coming out? Um, I don't know about Cars Three. Hopefully, if it comes out, I get another gig. But um, yeah, I don't know about that one. And the Falcon, I doubt we'll drive a Falcon too far into the future. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure what next year will bring. We um, it'd be nice to get a new. A new car, we could then do a new aero kit, and um, the way the manufacturers are now, you can be pretty aggressive on your aero kits, and it's about time we got an upgrade, so um, it'd be nice to have something different. Did you see the incident between Louds and Wing Cup, and who would, do you believe was at fault? I saw it, I was right behind it, and um, it's quite bizarre that uh, yeah, Wink Cup got into the side of his door and lounged it up off the track and then uh, he was pretty angry when he hopped out and um, marched out to the back of the truck but then 
when the cameras come out, he blamed it was his fault and he should have yielded. So um, quite surprised when mine was a little bit less um, obvious at uh, Phillip Island and it was my fault. But then when his teammate crashes him out blatantly and pushes him off the track, it was him who should have yielded. So he, uh, yes, Roland definitely is uh, a bit washed under the Roland spell, I think. But it's um, one of those things and if he's happy, Win Cup, I'm sure, will keep pushing him around and potentially win the championship again. Have you watched Cars 2 yet? We've watched it a few times. Um, I definitely made Oliver watch it, so whenever he watched it, I watched it. How close do you think you are to the first win this year? I think we're, uh, we're struggling a little bit. There's no doubt that this year's been tough, but um, yeah, I finished second at Simmers Plains and yeah, that, that's a track that, uh, you know, that, uh, where we're deficient probably will show up more. So um, so I don't think we're too far away. If we get it right, there's no reason why we can't win. But um, it's actually quite, yeah, it's quite tough at the moment. So we just need to get it right. The biggest issue is the uh, the car is so sensitive to, to changes. So we're doing the smallest change and getting a massive consequence. So if we get it right, we're okay. But... We just need to be consistent, and that's where we're, where we're lacking at the moment. Why do you hit the accelerator when you are braking and going down the gears? Also, what gear do you use when you do donuts at the end of the race? Um, we heel toe. It's called heel toe. So um, the idea is that you, you brake and you match the revs with the gear so then you don't get compression locking. And when you compression lock, it, it means that the rear end will lock. So you want the car to be stable. And uh, and yeah, you, you you pretty well downshift to match the revs and to make sure that the uh, the car's stable. But um, you see people with left foot brake, they don't use the clutch, but they always downshift with the throttle. Um, and for a burnout, it's first gear. So first gear, lots of revs and dump the clutch and turn left and keep going around in circles. It's pretty pretty easy, but um, pretty good fun because it means you've won the race. Question for both you and Renee. Before Renee met you, did she have an interest in or follow motorsport? And do Renee and your sons go to every race? They go to a lot of the races, but with the two kids, it's pretty tough. Um, they're both walking, so they both want to be into everything. So it's pretty hard. But um, uh, yeah, she was into motorsport. Her brother raced go karts, and um, she was a pit chick, so she used to help him out and do a bit of work on his cart and all the timekeeping and stuff, so here, um, she uh, was definitely into it. Ian, is Simmons Plains too small for V8s now, and if it needs to change, what would you keep? Um, good to see you on the weekend, Ian. It's good that you're part of the membership and the, the uh, that little chat around the boardroom. That was pretty cool. Um, I love the track. I think the track is big enough. Um, it's long enough. It just means you do double the laps, but when you're sitting on the hill, you just you get to see it twice as much, so um, I think it's a good track. I don't think they need extending. Maybe some facilities could have an upgrade, like um, up on the hill. You could probably get a bit of a, a bit better facilities potentially up there. But the way that they did the, the the park, the car park, and everything, I thought they'd be a really good job. So um, yeah, I think the track's fine, and um, yeah, no issue. I think it's I think it's really good. Have you done any laps? Round Winton this year, if so, how was the car speed? We haven't done any, um, which is a bit disappointing. But the year's gone that quick that we haven't had a chance to um, to do it yet. But we tested at Eastern Creek, which was washed out pretty well, which every team went to. Um, and then we went to uh, Adelaide um, Grand Prix, Tassie, and now Winton. So we haven't had a chance to really test there, but. Um, we know our setups. We, we think we think we should be okay. So um, we'll see how we go. But we, you know, when you test there, you can often test and test and test and find something. You go back two weeks later, and it's ten degrees cooler or ten degrees hotter, and the car's just completely different. So um, sometimes it's a benefit not to test because you get too drawn on what you've tested, and you don't go back to what you know, which um, which might be the the way we go this weekend. Congratulations on 30 in Brazil. Did you honestly think that you would have done so well? Um, I always thought I'd 
go okay, but I didn't know what to expect because the car was completely different. So, um, yeah, the way you had to drive it was was so much different to a V8. You had to uh, brake really deep, but then not grab throttle in the corner, where a V8 you brake relatively early to one of those cars, and then uh, um, not pick up the throttle and, and roll through the corner with all the aero. So it took a bit to get my head around that, but... Um, but yeah, the car was good and the team was really good and they gave you plenty of laps for um, for practice, so it was pretty good, but yeah, I wasn't sure what to expect. There were a lot of F1 guys and X, um, you know, ex-F1 guys, uh, Le Mans, GT, all around the world, so um, it was good good to prove that V8 supercar drivers are, are talented around the world and yeah, people sort of opened their eyes a bit. At first they didn't know what to expect and in the end you get invited back, so they must have um, thought we're okay. When doing an, an endurance race, how do you manage the waiting to get into the car to finish the race in your stint? Um, you pretty well. I just get a massage and chill out. Really, it's pretty uh, pretty glamorous. You just eat and relax, and you, you try and watch the race, but you've got to relax as well. So, depends on who your co-driver is. When it's Richard, you um, you used to just chill out and trust him and not really watch the race too much because um, yeah, you need to be fresh when you get in and at the end uh, I think my stint was 65 laps or something so um, yeah, you have to chill out but yeah, it's pretty relaxing and when it's your turn to go you switch back on. If there was is one thing you could do for your fans what would it be? Oh, it'd be a live chat that's why I'm doing it I think it's good to, to at the track's hard, and you'd love to give back to plenty of people. I'd love to put everyone in a race car to um, to show what our cars actually do, but um, yeah, the team probably wouldn't ex wouldn't like that idea because it cost them a fortune. But it'd be nice to yeah show what our cars can do. But other than that, you try and give back as much as you can. Halil, my old schoolmate. Um, well done on the Bathurst win. I have two. For how's Brazil and what did you think of Interlagos? I know teams up and down the lane have smartened up a lot, but surely FPR can't be behind the eight ball. Good luck this weekend. Thanks, mate. Um, yeah, Interlagos was awesome. The track is really cool. It's, um, it looks a lot different to TV, probably like Bathurst, where it looks quite flat, but when you get there, it's uh, it's really it's really um, undulated and up and down and some fast corners and um, and stuff, but yeah, the culture over there was completely different. They um, they all have a prayer before the race, so it's kind of a bit intimidating when you drive out a pit lane and the mechanic's doing the sign of the cross, and you're just hope, hoping he's not just praying that he did every wheel nut up on the car because it's not that confidence inspiring when you drive off and he's praying that he's done his job properly. So um, that was new, but um, really cool. All stood in a circle. Had a prayer, prayed for safety, prayed for performance, and um, yeah, just really different and really enjoyable. I really liked it. Um, awesome job this year. Does Shippy work in a different way to James Small? If so, how does he? He works completely different, which um, every engineer is unique, but uh, James was a racer. He, um, he raced himself, so he sort of went about it in a racing mode. Um, Shippy is more a uh, a uh, mechanical engineer that he's, he's into the numbers and, and studies the data and um, really looks at it in a different way. So, yeah, both are completely different, but, um, yeah, both are doing a great job and, yeah, it's just a different way of doing it. So you've got to learn to, to deal with or to what, um, what works the best with people. So um, what worked with James necessarily doesn't work with, with Shippy, so you've just got to change your approach and, give him the right information, so still trying to come to grips with that. How do you feel about Volvo coming in and performing so well when you've got other Ford teams still somewhat struggling down the order? Um, it's good that teams come in and, and do well. It's, uh, um, you know, I think the, the, there's, there's definitely a bit of parity going on and stuff like that, but they've come in and done a good job. They've got uh, good engines and, and good aero and a good driver, so they're doing a good job, but you um you can't alienate the, the brands that have been in the sport and built this sport and you, you want new teams to go well but you just can't disadvantage the others to to um 
yeah, to, to, to sort of put them behind. So um, it'll all work out, but I'm sure mid-year it'll work out, and by then it could be too late. But Volvo is getting lots of coverage at the moment, so it's good for them, and I'm sure they're happy having a big spend, and yeah, it's working well for them. Um, loved your Saturday press conference. When are they going to adjust the Falcon Aero to make it even? Hopefully soon, but um, yeah, we, we sort of can't, I'm not allowed to say too much about it. But um, yeah, it's, you know, you, you have to look at the races this year, and um, you know, the Grand Prix is a high speed track. We struggled. Um, Tasmania is relatively low speed track. We went quite well, so you sort of do the math and you can work it out. But um, yeah, there's other people above us trying to sort that out, and we just get told to deal with it. So you. Sort of go along with the flow, but um, hopefully, yeah, it sorts itself out. If you weren't a racer, what would you be? I don't really know. I'd probably be a, I don't know. When you race, you, you put everything into it, so um, you, yeah, you, you don't really have education. You just go to school and then pretty well finish school and go straight into karting and racing and sacrifice everything, so I'd be pretty unqualified or whatever I did, but... Um, I don't know. I have to be sport of some sort. I'm not very good on the uh, on the paperwork, so I'd have to be sport. How did the Brazilian stock cars feel compared to V8 supercars? Were there any drivers over there who you particularly enjoyed racing against? They're um, yeah, completely different, and how you drive them is completely different. How you set them up is completely different. Um, they're very even in terms of parity. They have the same engine, same aero kit. Um, so it was yeah, it was really close. Um, there's some really good drivers actually. The, the um, one guy that was really stood out that looked like a really good talent was Daniel Serra, who races the the Red Bull car over there. He was really pretty impressive. So um, yeah, there's some good drivers and yeah, racing against them on track. It didn't really end up racing them that closely because it all spread out pretty quickly by the time we hopped in. But um, yeah, they uh, there's some good drivers. They're really good drivers. I'd love to bring some over to to race at Bathurst, but after driving their car, I'd realised how hard it is for them to come and, and drive ours, so, um, but they're some good drivers. If you ruled the sport for a year, what rules would you implement? Um, I don't really know, that's a, that's a good question. Um, the, the chopping and changing I'd, I'd definitely get rid of because, um, yeah, it's, it's hard, like, you know, safety car restart, stuff like that. When they're chopping and changing, you get a little bit confused on what you're allowed to do and what you can't do, and um, it's all good when you read a rule book. But when you go in the car and the emotion and the adrenaline's going, you um, yeah, you sometimes forget about what you just read. So maybe I just keep more consistency in the in the rules. But um, maybe a reverse grid race, bring a reverse grid race back. I thought that was pretty cool. Do you feel any resentment towards Will now he's jumped ship, and are you ever tempted to accidentally run him off the track? Um, no, I don't feel resentment. He um, he's pretty happy with the move he made, and he got a good result on the weekend. So I'm sure he's um, pretty happy. But he ran off the track himself. So uh, yeah, I wouldn't run him off the track. He's a good guy. Will just um, enjoying where he is, and hopefully we beat him. That's the that's the main goal. But um, yeah, no resentment there for sure. What do you think the team needs to work on to bridge the gap to the leaders? Is the car much faster than last year? We're actually going a little bit quicker at some tracks than last year, but um, the the biggest gain I think you know Triple Eight have made is in their engine, and they uh, they they trialled a new engine in the Xbox car at Bathurst, and it was clearly a lot quicker than anyone else. Um, and now it looks like every car's got that. So at Tasmania um, on the weekend, it looked like they had a good tenth of a second or more just an engine performance, so when you're talking a tenth of a second being 10 grid spots, it's a massive amount, and when you see Lowndes driving from the back, he passes people down the straight, um, it's, uh, yeah, they've got really good engine power, so that doesn't happen overnight, Winton's not as important for engine, um, Barbagello is, Pukakoe probably is, but um, uh, yeah, you know, Tasmania particularly, just down that straight, the, the engine was not as quick as those triple eight boys. Even though you drive for Ford Performance Racing, are you a true Ford fan? Um, when I was young, I sort of went for drivers, not for brands, but once you get in uh, and meet the different manufacturers, the Ford guys are the, 
the uh, yeah, really friendly guys and definitely become attached to him and only ever driven a Ford. So, um, yeah, pretty attached to him and don't, you know, don't plan on leaving. So it um, could do my whole career in one brand, which would be pretty cool. Given the high, given the very high level of competition in modern V8 racing, what do you do to keep race fit physically and mentally? Um, I train with my trainer Paul Turk, who um, who is a strength and conditioning coach for the Bombers, the Essendon Bombers. So he puts us through the the ropes at the gym, and um, we do a lot of weights and cycling and running and um, you know, pretty well CrossFit, a bit of everything. So mentally. Um, or physically puts you under mental stress. So, um, yeah, we train pretty hard and, um, yeah, just mentally you, you sort of prepare at the workshop and go through data and look at footage and all those sort of things. But when the car's good, you're mentally in a good state. So, um, yeah, it's just it's just more physical. Put yourself under physical stress, get through challenges, and, and normally yeah, that's the best way you can prepare. If you could listen to any song while racing, what would it be? Um, I don't really know. I like a few. I'm probably more a diva. <laughs> it's pretty bad. No, I'll go a bit of K Sand by Jimmy Barnes, Cold Chisel. Something a bit more heavy, just to get me in the mood. Um, happy belated birthday to Renee. And well done on third. Um, April Fool's Day. After Tassie and the two podiums, do you feel the FPR Pepsi Max Falcon will be more suited to the smaller track like Winton? Um, I think I think we will. I think we'll go okay there. The problem is that there's a lot of good cars that uh, that, that go well at Winton. But um, yeah, we won there last year, so we've got form on the board. So we'll um, we'll see how we go. But uh, yeah, I think I think we'll go okay at Winton. Um, we need to keep our championship alive and get through this, this tight sort of calendar that they've got going for us. So um, I think we'll go okay. Why after two podiums did you fiddle with the setup for the longer race with the extra distance mean you would drop further back? I wish I wish we didn't fiddle with it. That was a silly, silly move. But um, the car's so sensitive. Like, it's, it's, it's really hard to explain, but the, the, the rate of change that we did was was... 1% and normally when you when you change it 1% you get a really small change um, uh, but now 1% making a massive difference to our car so it's not uh, yeah, it's not it's not in the window we need to get the window back to where we thought it was and um, you need to make changes to try and improve but um, yeah they're not working at the moment so we need to need to make sure because you know, qualifying 13th just put you in the pack, and it's um yeah, it's too hard to race there. So um, yeah, we just need to get our window up. If you were given the chance to race F1 WRC on NASCAR, what would you choose? I'd choose NASCAR because um, yeah, Formula One and WRC, you don't really race anyone. NASCAR, you race side by side, and yeah, you really uh, you really you know, have to race, and that's that's a good part about racing. So, um, yeah, I choose NASCAR over any, but out of pure pure car, you just drive a Formula One. If you could just go and do some hot laps and take a car for a fang, you you take the uh, you take the F1 car. Um, can Red Bull be beaten this year? Um, I think they can be beaten for sure, but pretty tough. They've got good engine, they've got good cars, good drivers, so. It's going to be uh, quite tough, but if I get the chance, I'm going to definitely put the car there and have a crack. So um, I hope we can. I've uh, been a massive fan of Sim, oh, the Brazilian stock car game. I'm hoping you know it's based around the Brazilian stock cars in the Sim. The cars look awfully cramped. Are they like that in real life? Um, it's actually a really good game. I've used the game to practice for... Um, the practice for the Brazilian stock car. So when I went over there, I already knew the track and knew the car, and it's actually really realistic. It's a good game. So um, what you see is what they are, but they are more cramped. They're very um, a lot smaller and more combust. They've got a big fuel tank in the side of the car, and they've got um, they're a lot shorter than our cars. So yeah, it's not much. There's not much room in there, but um, um, but yeah, how you play it is how it is in real life. It's it's really cool. 
Frosty, do you do drivers have their own nicknames for their cars? Um, no, I don't have a nickname for mine. I would have had a good one on Saturday and a bad one on Sunday, so probably good not naming my car. But um, no, I have to come up with one. We should do a bit of a comp for uh, for who can come up with the best nickname for the car. We might do that. We might do it for next time. Come up with a name. Why aren't we fast out of the box on race weekends? We seem to be behind the eight ball. I wish I knew the answer for that one. We, um, yeah, we just don't have a setup at the moment, and it's, um, yeah, it's quite quite hard. And um, yes, yeah, yeah, I don't know why. So we need to definitely work to um, to to get on top of it. And uh, yeah, we're trying. We're definitely working, and, and people at the workshop are really trying to do it. So um, yeah, hopefully we get there, but. Um, yeah, we, we are struggling out of the out of the box, and it, it, it's hard to tune the car back over a race weekend. I'm an up-and-coming female race car driver and would love to race against you in the V8s one day. I work at McDonald's and struggle to get sponsorship. I was wondering if you had any advice to help get me there. It's yeah, it's hard. It's um, it's hard to get the, the the sponsorship and stuff to get there. But you know, karting is the best way. You start in go karts and then try and work your way through. But People watch if you if you do a good job and um, have a good time and and uh, yeah, get results. There's definitely people watching. You know, people like um, like Chaz were, uh, were were watched in go karts and Formula Ford and the big teams now are looking for the younger guys to come through. So and girls. So um, yeah, you 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 just gotta uh, keep at it. And there are people watching and just um, just do your best. Would you consider moving to either Erebus, Nissan, or Volvo if an offer was put forward to you? I didn't even contemplate looking at any offers, and Ford, I've been at Ford my whole life, so I'm there for another three years minimum, and um, yeah, I'd like to stay at one team and one brand for my whole career, so um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. You never know what the future brings, but... Uh, I think it was unlikely. <coughs> what have we got? I just want to know what you reckon about Jamie Winkup and Craig Lance getting together. Uh, I already yeah, went over that one a little bit before, but um, it uh, yeah, it's good to see because it, it creates racing, and, and you know I think you've got to have teammates racing each other, and they just move over. It's not really that good for the sport, so I thought it was good. Hey Frosty, no disrespect to Chaz. Do you find it more challenging working alongside a young gun, just starting, or a seasoned campaigner like Steve or Will? Um, I think it's good. You know, Chaz is. It's good to have a, a guy, um, you know, young. The, the only thing they lack is the ability to, to develop a car because they haven't had years of experience. But it's nice to, um, yeah, it's nice to work with a young guy and and. Uh, you know, and see where they're going to be in the future and how they approach racing. What they bring compared to an older guy or a seasoned guy is, is enthusiasm and, and excitement. Some of the older guys get a bit stale, and it's probably me included. We get a bit grumpy and miserable, so the young guys just love it. And, um, yeah, you sort of soak up all that. And, you know, Jack Perkins as well, and they're, they're both hungry. First year, really, at the factory team, and they're both hungry, so, um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's good having the younger guys because you do you do draw from a bit. How did I get the nickname Frosty? With the name Winterbottom, I got called lots of bad things. So um, Frosty was the most clean PG rated one. Larka. I could I could tell you a few others, but Larko was the one who called Frosty. He's big on nicknames, so um, yeah, just stuck from there really. It's awesome. The time you give to your fans, truly appreciate it. These chats bring us into the sport like our very own debrief. Do you get nervous before every race and how much do nerves play a part in how well you perform? How do you overcome them? Um, thanks for coming on. It's good that people come on and want to listen to my debrief. But um, you get nervous. You still, like, you, you don't really get too nervous, but you still go to the toilet before every race and you still get that churn in the tummy. So... I think the day that that goes, you, you, you retire because that's where you go racing. You you, you love the adrenaline and the the uh, you know the excitement of um, of racing. So yeah, you still get nervous. I want to do well, and 
um, yeah, just want to want to do well, really. So that's the pressure you put on yourself, and it's um, yeah, it's good sport. And the day that that goes, definitely, yeah, I think it's time to to, to give it up. What have we got? What do you think will happen to you and V8 Supercars when Ford and Holden stop production? Um, oh, they're, they're still going to be here, so um, yeah, they're, they're, it won't change. It's still going to support the sport, and it's um, yeah, I don't think it's going to change too much. Would you be excited to see Marcus Ambrose coming to V8 Supercars next year? If so, what do you reckon? Um, I would like to see him come back because. Um, you know, when he left, he was on top of his game, and he was uh, at probably the best team at the time and dominated the sport. So, um, yeah, I'd like to see him come back. So I think the sport's changed a fair bit since he's gone, and he's, a, he's an incredible talent. And uh, um, yeah, it'd be good to see him come back. But um, I'd actually like to see him in one of our cars because um, yeah, he, he sort of realised that uh, that the cars are. Not that easy to drive at the moment, so it'd be good if you come back. But um, he's doing a good job over there. I watched him finish position five the other day. He's doing an awesome job, so um, there's no reason why he should come back. How did FPR organisation handle the accident between you and Perkins in Tassie? It was, um, yeah, it was a pretty crap sort of moment, that one. So um, they were okay. Jack come up, he, uh, he apologised because... The car on the track has right of way, and that's how they sort of explain it in the driver's briefing. So, um, when you drive out of pit lane, there's a blue flag, and then the engineer gets on the radio and says the track's clear or merge behind car five or however they say it. Um, but Jack's engineer didn't give him the communication. He drove out thinking it was clear, and um, yeah, unfortunately, that was my car there. So, not good. Created a bit of damage to my car, so he qualified poorly. Uh, put him out of qualifying as well, so um, yeah, it wasn't wasn't good. But um, he felt bad, but no hard feelings to him. We um, shake hands, get on with it. But his engineer, I think, would be the one that feels bad for not uh, giving him the communication he, he probably wanted. What do you think of Baskerville Raceway? And do you think V8 would ever race there? I think it's crazy that track. I can't believe people um, yeah raced there back in the days. It's a pretty, uh, pretty cool track. It's, it reminds me of Emaru, those real old heritage tracks, but um, yeah, there'd have to be a few upgrades there before we uh, could go race there. But they're trying to raise some funds for to keep that track alive, so hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully they, uh, they, they keep the track alive because it's important for state races, um, more so than for a V8 supercar. So. They need a, a track in Hobart, and um, yeah. What have we got here? Who's going to be my co-driver for the Enduro Cup? You will have to stay tuned for that one. It's um, yeah, it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be revealed very soon. Oh, right, well, we've got a couple more, and then I'm going to have to get it bed and get ready for a briefing, and also show you what you're going to win when you hashtag the Frosty Fan on Instagram. Pretty cool prize. I'm pretty pumped. I hope you like it. Um, we'll do a couple of questions and then I'll show you the the prize. Do you miss James Small? I do miss James Small. He's a very good race engineer, but at the same time, it's exciting having a new guy. But um, I know James is missing home. He was on the on the text all weekend at um, Tasmania, telling me what I was doing right, what I was doing wrong, what setups we should run. And, Sort of watching the timing, telling me where I was weak and strong. So he um, he's a very good engineer. So he is missed, but he's got two top tens in a row for his driver in NASCAR, and that's the first time they've ever had uh, top ten. So um, he's doing a good job over there, which never really uh, never really doubted. All right, we'll do the last one. Um, Frosty, do you think the AZ zones are a good idea on restarts? I think they're a good idea. The, um, the the way they did the restarts on the weekend were good, but they now need to just keep that um, flowing for the rest of the year. They can't chop and change because we now understand where you can accelerate, um, single file, all those things. Um, it's uh, yeah, 
it, it's good. I think they've got it right now, but no more chopping and changing. It's it's um it's about time they left it. So, which speaking of left it, this is where I'm going to leave it. But um, this is a prize that I'm going to give. So it's pretty unique. It's the Simed Brazilian T-shirt. I'm going to sign it. Uh, I've got two of them. So there's this one, um, which is yeah pretty cool. I think not available in Australia. So we've got a medium there, and we've got the the full team shirt. So um, yeah, pretty cool gift. You can't buy them here. You can't um, you can't get them. So yeah, I'll sign them and. It's a podium from Brazil, and uh, so yeah. So you hashtag the, uh, the the frosty fan, put a photo up to Instagram. I'll check it on the website, and then uh, I'll um, choose a favourite, and then we'll uh, get your details and go from there. So thanks, guys. We'll um, go racing in three days' time, and more podiums. We're not far away. We just need to work hard and have faith. Um, but we'll be back soon. Thanks, guys.